Today is an extremely sensitive day, as you are likely aware. But in case you aren't, it marks the one-year anniversary from when Hamas launched that brutal attack on innocent Israeli civilians staining the world. And now it's caused massive division, especially here in Canada, over free Palestine, pro-Israel, we're going to exterminate you, no, we're going to exterminate you. And, and what does this all mean? Well, we have uh, official press conferences that got released after question period today by liberal MPs and they were heavily, heavily accused today by the leader of the opposition, Pierre Poiliev. Pierre has been extremely pro-Israel from the beginning saying, look, the fact that people are in the streets with these Hamas flags, Hezbollah flags, and they are protesting and calling for, you know, the extermination of Jewish people. Basically, they, they want to take it off the map. That's not OK. And especially since Canada recognizes, you know, Hamas and Hezbollah, Tehran as, um, you know, uh, terrorist entities. The fact that there are people in the streets that are glorifying those terrorist entities is just crazy. And then you have the legalities that are being broken within those protests they've got you know these smoke grenades and they're standing up on scaffolding on top of cranes it's getting insane and it did get insane today but Pierre Polyev was focusing on how the liberal government is not they are not condemning those protests or uh, the protests are allowing them to happen which is again an extremely divisive point or topic here in Canada and we're going to be taking a look at that on an in-depth level welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video everybody before we get into it I do want to encourage you all to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already it does really help grow the channel and without further ado Let's get into it. But for those that missed it, we do have an update in the polls, right? Pierre Polyev is up to 228 projected seats. Justin Trudeau is down from the 60s to 53. And then you have the block at 42 and Jagmeet at 18. And then it's still 99% likely across the board for winning the most seats and odds of a majority government. Now let's take a look at there's, there's three major places that these uh, pro-Palestine uh, protests Tests are taking place. This one is uh, in Quebec. Okay, so this was a walkout that took place uh, on a university campus, right? Con uh, Concordia, it looks like. And then the next one is over in Queen's Park in Toronto. Heavy, heavy, heavy police presence. In your face. This is ridiculous. The police are doing nothing. All right, so they create a clear line between the anyone who supports Palestine and anyone who stands with Israel. And like this is just insane. And then finally, the third one is in Ottawa. Now, this is something that the right blend caught here on X. They are bringing in armored police vehicles specifically to be able to contain these protests. Ottawa Police Tactical Bearcat on Wellington Street in Ottawa as there is expected to be a pro-Palestinian rally at the Israeli embassy around the corner in just a short time. Crazy. And then for those that missed it, we're just going to do a very quick glance or highlight over what Pierre Poiliev said in the House of Commons and how he did not get a single answer from any Liberal MP. Here we go. I gave the Foreign Affairs Minister two opportunities to condemn the increasingly common and terrifying anti-Semitic chants we hear in the streets. Israel will soon be gone. There is, no, there is only one solution, intifada revolution. Twice she refused to condemn those remarks. She continues to pander to Hamas supporters and the Liberal Party as part of her leadership campaign rather than doing her job. So I'll give her another chance. Will she publicly support Israel's right to retaliate against the tyrants of Tehran and the terrorists in Hezbollah and Hamas to protect itself? Yes or no? Yeah. 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 
don't do politics at Bell. Hold on. Hold on. The speaker didn't announce you. Nobody heard you. I just want to uh, encourage all members to ensure, uh, consistent with rulings in the past, and I will come back to this near the end of the uh, question period, but just to caution all members to please be judicious in their words. The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Mr. Speaker, if there's a day where we don't do politics about people's lives being taken or people being killed, it's today. Look at their fake enthusiasm. One person stood up. Any form of anti-Semitism, I hope, in this House. Any form of discrimination. And I really hope that my colleague in front will apologize. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. people freaking waving Hezbollah and Hamas flags in the streets of Toronto and Ottawa. <laughs> that was the matter with you. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. There was ever a day when we needed a government to stand up for what was right. This it's was today. Be- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes! Has sought to divide Canadians by saying one thing to one group and precisely the opposite to another group. And here in this house, remaining radio silent on condemning anti-Semitic chants and on supporting Israel's right to truly defend itself by retaliating against the terrorists and tyrants. Why won't she do the right thing and stand beside the Jewish people today? There you go, man. The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, one year ago in the Middle East, peace was broken by a violent terrorist attack by Hamas. On this side of the ocean, we deserve to do better in terms of the protests that we articulate. It needs to be peaceful. What that means is you don't go out on the streets and target a daycare. You don't go out on the streets and target a community centre. You don't go out on the streets and target a synagogue. Our resolve to fight anti-Semitism is strong. It has been strong since this parliament started when we outlawed the will for promotion of anti-Semitism. It is even stronger now when we're advocating for more strict penalties, which that party opposes. So as you saw, Melanie Jolie had nothing to say, none answers. She dodged the question when it came when she came face to face with Pierre Polyev. But when she got uh, approached by reporters in Parliament, where there wasn't that you know nervousness of a heated debate, here's what she had to say about the issue. Oh, sorry, you suggested you're pandering to in support of your leadership campaign. What do you make of that comment? Well, first of all, today is an important day. It's a day where we commemorate all those who were killed, who were injured, who were abused, who were taken hostage. And it's a day where basically we also mourn the fact that there were eight Canadian citizens killed. This morning, what did I do? I was in contact with Iris Weinstein, who's uh, Judy Weinstein's daughter who's still asking for the remains of her mom to go back. And that way she can, you know, be able to grieve. I was in contact with Alexandre Luke's father. I was in contact with Vivian Silver's son. That's what you do when you hold a position of power in these difficult times. You support people. You show moral leadership. You don't freaking gaslight people. Not on a day that is so important for the country. And clearly that's what Pierre Poilier was doing today. And clearly (laughs) what he was saying, he was trying to play petty politics on the backs of victims. And so that's why not only should he apologize for what he did, but clearly the guy's unfit to become prime minister because Canadians deserve way better. All right. So first of all, that's acting at the worst level. Like, that's not even a Bollywood movie, let alone a Hollywood movie. That's some middle school level acting. Probably learned that from Justin Trudeau. First of all, that's gaslighting at the finest. Okay, chill out. No. Pierre Poiliev has stated very, very clearly that he, the Conservative Party, and the government of Canada stands unequivocally with Israel. 
And then you have people that are glorifying terrorist entities. Might as well be people in the streets running around saying, we love ISIS, we love ISIS, ah, go ISIS, go, right? That sounds really bad, but that's the equivalent of Hamas and Hezbollah, yet it's allowed and our government is doing nothing about it. They're not saying anything against it. They're not condemning it. Nothing. It's extremely divisive. The government doesn't want to take a clear stance on we stand with Israel or we stand with the right to protest so long as you're not supporting a freaking terrorist organization or entity because they want to pander to those votes. And that's why Pierre Poiliev has said many, many times that they are pandering. And that's why that reporter asked that Pierre, you know, Pierre is accusing you of pandering. What do you have to say? And then she throws her little make-believe, you know, tantrum or whatever. It's just, it's, it's so gross, man. And I'm so glad that we have social media to be able to highlight just how ridiculous this is. Because if you think back to, you know, 15 years ago or 10 years ago, there was social media was not used to what it is right now. And so everyone would just be subject to either reading about this in the newspaper or seeing it on mainstream media. And then that's it. And people would be like either angry and talking amongst themselves going, that just seems like a load of crap. And they wouldn't have anywhere to actually go and, you know, talk about it other than just with a couple of people in person, if that were the case. But now you got social media and you've got hundreds of thousands of views accumulatively from different channels that get to just, expose how stupid how stupid and blatantly ignorant these people are and if that wasn't enough let's take a look at Karina Gould who's just as guilty of the same level of stupidity and level of ignorance and Madame Lansman, what Madame Lansman and Mr. Polly have said both of them made strong statements today what did you make of them look I think today as October 7th is um, a terrible anniversary uh, a year ago, there was a horrific terrorist attack in Israel. 1,200 people were murdered, over 200 were taken hostage. Uh, that, is, that is a horrific day for any nation. And today is about remembering those victims. It's about standing in solidarity with the people of Israel. It's about standing in solidarity with Canadian Jewish people who for the past year have uh, experienced unbelievable anti-Semitism uh, who have been targeted in their places of worship, in their community centers. It is completely unacceptable. But to their point and of what they were suggesting, that the Liberal government is tolerating anti-Semitic chants in the streets, lawless mobs, etc. Can you is, speak to their point? It is completely untrue. And we have at every turn condemned anti-Semitism. And today, Minister Varani, our Attorney General and Minister of Justice, was exceptionally clear, uh, as we have been over the past year, that Canadians have a right to peaceful protest, but that protest must be peaceful. And that doesn't mean that you go and protest at a Jewish daycare. It doesn't mean that you go and protest at a Jewish school, and it doesn't mean that you target a synagogue. These are places that are sacred spaces for people, and that should be respected. And I believe personally that Canadians deserve better than that, and that Canadians, in fact, can be an example for the world about how we can live peacefully together, even when there is conflict happening in other parts of the world. Okay. Like, if, if you actually believe that, you'd be taking action against what is happening right now in the streets of Canada. You have people right now, this minute, five, ten minutes ago, an hour ago, and an hour into the future, that are at these protests calling for the death of other Canadians because of their background, because of what side they stand on. It's absolutely insane, and it's so disgusting that anybody would support such a divisive and weak spawn government like the Liberal Party. You people are gross. You are causing division. There's chaos in the streets. There are people that want to murder. There's people living in Canada that want to murder other people living in Canada because of the spineless side or lack of taking a side that you are taking because you want to pander to get more votes. It's just gross. You guys are going to lose anyways. Who are you really trying to pander to? Like I've said before, Pierre Polyev could do blackface not twice, because now he's so far ahead in the polls. Pierre Polyev could do blackface three times before Christmas this year, and he still has a better chance. I don't recommend he do that, but he still has a better chance if he were to accidentally stumble into that position of winning 
the next election than Justin Trudeau. Like that's how bad Justin Trudeau is doing in the polls. I want to pass the question off to you. How do you feel about this? Do you feel like the government should take more of a stance on where they actually are instead of pandering or am I just overreacting? Because I don't know. I'm just ser- sitting here with lights in my face, talking to a camera. I have my own personal opinion, but I would love to know what you guys have to say as well. But now let's take a look at what else is happening in the streets. You got to see a little bit of the build up tension. We got to see what MPs, liberal MPs have to say. You got to see the incompetence of what happened in the House of Commons that Pierre Polyev did a phenomenal job of exposing. And now it's nightfall and the protests are picking up. Let's take a look. This is crazy, folks. I cannot believe this is going on. All right, country in decline. Anti-Israel protesters take to the streets in front of the boxed up statue of Canada's founder, Sir John A. Macdonald. And they've got strollers. They're bringing kids to these events. We, the Liberal Party of Canada, we support this. Say it louder so the backbenchers of the Liberal Party can hear you. So that is one location. As you can see, people have brought their children to these protests to call for the extermination of other people living in Canada. Uh, Unbelievable. But then you have actual vandalism that's taking place here. Uh, Harrison Faulkner says, watch us pro-Palestine Antifa thugs in Montreal smash up a McGill University building. So brave, we, the Liberal Party of Canada, unequivocally stand with this. Congratulations, pro-Palestine. You have won more social credits. Like, come on, dude. They're freaking vandalizing. Are you kidding me? Come on, government. Hello. Time to wake up. Then you've got the right blend in Ottawa, and it's obviously nightfall. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Everybody's covering their face. People are smashing buildings, calling for the death of Jews. I can just imagine Justin Trudeau somewhere watching this going, I'm Justin Trudeau and I support this. (laughs) For crying out loud. There you go. Exist, resist, and revolt. That's that's the motto. Exist, resist, and revolt. And then you've got uh, grenade launchers, smoke grenade launchers. Sorry, I got to clarify on that one. Oopsie. That are being deployed in Montreal just outside of McGill University. And people are running away because of all of the, um, all of the, the crap that they are causing, right? All the destruction. It's, it's just crazy, man. It's crazy what's going on uh, in our country. Like, this is not this is not what any of us signed up for, right? Here, let's continue the video. This is the crowd of the people who truly, truly show up to every event, to every protest, to every live action, to every teaching. You guys are... Not one Canadian flag. So today we want you guys to be as loud as possible. People from other countries bringing their problems to this country. Free, 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 free
So, I mean, it's still it's still relatively early in in the night right now, and uh, I, I guess we'll find out more of how this really unravels uh, in the morning, which is you know a great segue to kind of end this video and encourage you to subscribe to this channel with post notifications because early morning uh, tomorrow we're gonna have some more footage and a video prepared for you folks so we can really just see what the hell is going on, man. Like this has got to be brought up in the house again. Pierre's doing again, quite literally. Pierre's doing everything that he possibly can. All conservative MPs are saying, hey, look, this is nuts what's going on. Something has to happen. And now you have vandalism. You've got the police are launching smoke grenades. Like, dude, this went on for three weeks. Three weeks. And it was not calling for the death of anybody. You know where I'm going with this? In Ottawa in 2022, February 2022. You had a protest going on for three weeks. And then they brought out the, the smoke grenades and the stormtroopers. And then this has been going on for a year to date one full year every weekend multiple times a week and now finally there's a, a, a heavier police presence than we have ever seen but it's only because it falls on the day of october 7th the one year anniversary of these atrocious events which all of these people in the streets wish that that could happen every day right like that that's crazy man that's crazy we need unity we need proper leadership in this country we need people to be waving canadian flags going let's focus on canadian problems let's focus on our own people we got there's probably people living in the streets that shouldn't be living in the streets that are right at the feet of these protesters and nothing. No, no one cares about that. It's all about other countries' problems and like the queers for Palestine thing. Like, come on, give me a break. Let's be real. Well, the snap out of it. You know, that, that, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments about this. More to follow tomorrow morning. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye for now.